Hello, Polygoners! Welcome to Carolina Gaming Summit. They gave me my own little casting booth. As you can see, plenty of players behind me. Most of those players are actually going to be League of Legends players. We've got so many different tournaments being run. We're all kind of sharing a space. There's people above us, people below us, people to every side. It's kind of hectic, but a lot of fun. Now, we haven't had that much of a sign-up for the StarCraft event. Unfortunately, it does look like um, the later, you know, creating of the tournament has uh, affected things poorly. And as you can see, I forgot my blue Yeti, unfortunately, so hopefully the audio isn't too bad going to the webcam. I don't know how bad this room echoes, but here we are. We are at CGS. This is the Carolina Gaming Summit in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And it's just going to be me casting, me observing. I'm on a brand new computer. I've never used it before. And I've only got one monitor. I'm used to two or more. So this might be a little bit of a rough cast, but it's going to be, like I said, a lot of fun. Guys, we're going to be getting right into it. I'm about to switch over to StarCraft and see what's going on with the players. And when they are ready, we'll be getting right into it. Now, in case you're not 100% um, familiar with the format, we weren't sure what the best of series would be, whether it would be a best of um, seven, best of nine, best of three, how many rounds we'd have. All of that was really up to, for question after seeing basically what players and how many players we would end up having. Since only two players registered for this event, we're going to go ahead and make this the grand finals, and it's going to be a best of nine. So, the way we're going to do this is I have selected a default map uh, of Catalyst. Seems to be the most default, basic, fair um, map for this matchup. It's going to be a Terran vs. Protoss. I'm a Zerg player, so... Man, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> but, um, so these guys are playing for Carolina Gaming Summit uh, brownie points, basically. We got a first, second uh, prize. Um, one's a trophy for second prize. One's an awesome plaque for first prize. They're playing for brownie points. This is the Carolina Gaming Summit. Well, we will reuse two maps since there's only seven maps in the map pool. And whoever loses actually gets map selection choice. So we'll see where that goes from here. Um, I want to double check a few things on my settings here because, like I said, it's a new computer and I don't want to assume assume anything. So let's go over here. And the audio still seems to be working, but um, StarCraft does not. Capture a specific window. Yes, StarCraft 2. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, let's double check a few things. Ah, windowed full screen. The one setting I forgot to check. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, you guys should be able to see StarCraft now. Let us confirm this. Yes, yes, it's looking good. Unfortunately, this is a weird display, so... Hold on, we can fix this. Those borders on the side. Uh, we might be able to fix that that next game. Screw it. We'll, we'll just go ahead and jump right into this. Because here on the bottom right-hand side of Catalyst Ladder Edition, in the red Brozos trunks, he is... Raisin Hawk! Woo! And here on the top left-hand side of that map, he is an old-school brewboard player. He has been playing Terran since 1998. His name is Ben. Praise crap! Alright, so... The Terran is actually a little new to StarCraft 2. He's played Brood War quite a bit, maybe a little bit of Remastered. He likes to get that uh, that old school legacy style. Uh, when I say legacy, I mean legacy video games, not legacy of the void. Uh, legacy style uh, video game action going on. And we'll see if his uh, skills from that will translate to this. Meanwhile, his opponent is chilling very comfortably in Bronze League. He's a IT guy from North Carolina. And... Uh, yeah, that gives him an advantage on like the keyboard and the mouse. He knows how to use those. We'll see how quickly he knows how to use those. APM, a little low for both players, but ah, we can fix that after this. So basically the plan um, after this uh, match will be to go into a um, the Sunday skirmish at 2 p.m. If this is um, 
This should be over by then. And then the plan from there will be to just have everyone on stream and we'll do some coaching and some teaching and just, you know, all around have some fun. And uh, we'll see where that goes from there. Anyways, guys, build orders. There are none. This is low level. However, we've got a, you know, double gateway coming out. We've got a forge. We've got a cybernetic score coming. The interesting choice about going for this forge is that he's not really walled off this ramp. I don't know if that's... I mean, it's definitely something you want to do against Terrence, but Hellions and stuff can't get in. So these two gateways, you know, they'd want to be a little bit more on this ramp, and the cannons be a little bit behind. He's playing very turtly. That means he's not going to be able to expand. Um, ben showing his Brood War uh, skills here with the, the Ninja SCV, but the Zealot's going to snipe that right on down. However, he does know to expand. He knows that um, StarCraft is a game of economy. Now, with that SCV scout, he has seen that there's uh, roughly, you know, two Zealots on the field. Oh, my God, what's going on with these probes? There's a probe pull. Guys, there's a probe pull. What, what's going on? Why is there a probe pull? And they're going back. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> okay. So... Widowmine going to be crawling its way around the field. Now, these newer units, because like Widowmines have no equivalent in Brood War, they might be a little tricky for Craze to uh, get the hang of, but he yeah, is sniping uh, the Zealots. Zealots have gone down. This Zealot um, would have been really good paired with the Sentries. It's just not going to happen. He does sacrifice the mine, and that's a lot of cannons, Ben. All right, Ben very smartly pulling away from the cannons. And here's the thing. Raisin Hawk is playing super, super turtly. Sentry is going to allow that even more so, but he's rallying his gateway units straight into uh, the fire here of Craze's Marines. And uh, Craze is very, very comfortable just sitting here on this expansion because he's got one of his own that's going to ultimately give him a huge advantage going into the late game. making sure the music playing I can't hear it because for some reason the headphones I was given don't work but that's okay guys going out, and looks like Raisin Hawk's not the only one who was having a little bit of supply line issues we've got a bunch of SCVs following an SCV um, hopefully we'll get them to Fix that very shortly, but eh. <laughs> we'll see how that ends up working out for him. Now, Raisin Hawk, a little bit lower on the gas. Now, it makes sense because he has invested all of these minerals into the photon cannons. This is going to turn out to be a very turtley game, I think. Um, I know Craze is pretty darn good with, uh, with drop ships at times, so I'm curious to see if he will bring a meta back up along this ledge and just take advantage of the fact that there's only defense over here. So many SCVs. We've got some more cannons actually in production here. Tanks also in production, as well as a plus one upgrade for the Protoss. So where the Terran is choosing to go for higher level tech, we've got more upgrade oriented tech coming from the Protoss. It's actually pretty good because most Protoss units do benefit from all of the tech, with the exception of air. Mech, on the other hand, doesn't benefit from Terran. You always need a little mech with your bio. Eh. Either way, upgrades are awesome, especially at this stage of the game. Now, Craze knows the position he's in. He knows this is an awesome position. Like I said, old school Brew War player. So taking the entire tire map with base is totally something I was expecting here. Oh, looks like people are looking for the Overwatch room. Okay, cool. 
hopefully you guys can't hear too much uh, background noise through the through the thin walls here. All right, Zealot and Stalkers and Sentries moving on down. Craze has got a huge army here, though. Um, Guardian Shield, very, very effective at uh, dealing with Marines. Marines fire super, super fast. So every hit of that armor, um, that additional armor, totally obliterates their attack. Still doing a lot of damage there. He is going to get pushed back. And as you can see, he's floating quite a bit. So hopefully we'll see some more powering um, coming out of the barracks yet. There we go, more barracks coming down immediately. So very good game sense for someone who's not that familiar with the StarCraft II meta. He is making a lot of the right choices here. Now, Raisin Hawk, being a Protoss, Turtley play can be the right choice, but this is more Wings of Liberty-esque in a way. He is just now taking a base around nine minutes. Usually that's around three minutes in the current meta, up to seven in Wings of Liberty. So no matter any standard you're using, he's a little bit late. And now these cannons that he has invested so heavily in will actually not be that effective. Of course, the uh, the drop's not going to be um, not going to be an option with this many cannons. But what's the point? He's already spent so much resources and things that really aren't going to be that useful for him, especially not when these tanks move out. All right, so we got the plus one armor coming for uh, Crazy. He's going to be responding to that plus one infantry weapon, or not infantry weapons, plus one attack for, for the Protoss. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm just really curious what Razenhawk's planning to do with all of these uh, these turrets. Like, I know Crazy knows how to play against this style. This is very common at low level uh, Brutal. <laughs> More cannons. More cannons! They're pretty good against like lower tier units, but once you start getting to the mid and later tiers, just not so much. <laughs> All right, this could be a decisive moment here. There are six tanks moving on the field. Not quite as many Marines I would like, considering his mineral count. Uh, would love more reactors, would love more barracks, would love just more production facilities in general. But it's okay. Oh, there's no stem pack. That's what the Marines are missing. No stem pack. It doesn't matter. The tanks are awesome. So this expansion, probably going to get shelled for quite some time before ultimately getting eliminated. I just don't see there being that much that cannons can do against tanks. And again, Craze knows to leapfrog against tanks. He's not going to just get caught out of position like you would expect a typical Bronze. So like seeing this, this is, this is really like, I know it's low level. I know a lot of people don't like watching low level games, but... Seeing the mind games from a Brood War, almost pro, maybe a quarter of a semi-pro maybe. Anyways, a really good Brood War player just now coming to StarCraft after so, so long. Very interesting to see. Now, a lot of these gateway units from Raisinhawk taking a huge amount of damage. Tanks doing a great job against the Stalkers, against the Sentries. All of that doesn't even matter against tanks. Now, there's a 7th and 8th tank on the field and... He's just taking a few shots with those tanks and not even worrying about it, not flinching one little bit. These uh, sentries can get pulled away from that. So we see that this turtley style can be punished with good game sense. Now, we're talking a lot about like the economy and the fact that Craze has had a better economy, three times the economy for you know different periods throughout the last 13 minutes. That's why he's floating so much also. That's why he's a hundred supply ahead of his opponent. His opponent has not been helping that by making cannons instead of like zealots or upgrades and things like that. These cannons do not take supply. So it's a little bit misleading to just look at that supply count, but crazy worlds ahead right now. Absolutely worlds ahead. A turtley style like this works if you are using your gas 
to go for like higher tech units like carriers or something like that, if carriers were to appear on the field right now, this would be a great situation for Rezanov. Unfortunately, he's been blasting most of his gas. Well, he hasn't been mining that much gas. Remember, there was two out of three for the longest time over here. There still is. Um, so no carriers. So less gas. It's not a very consistent position. Turtling allows you to get to a super fast tech. And said he just went gateway units with cannons, and that's going to die out very, very quickly. The uh, tanks are going to have a hard time getting up the ramp, though. That's going to be the issue Kraze now faces. He doesn't have any medevacs um, to, to, like, spot up there. That's really where you would want to go with that. Um, and he's got to... Ooh, he's going for the Reapers. That could actually be, be pretty good. They can jump up cliffs. They're going to die pretty quickly. But he's got to do this before the Stargate finishes and can start producing something that's going to be able to push this army back. One Void Ray, not going to be enough. There's too many Marines here. In fact, Tempest might actually be the only uh, the only option here for, for Raisinhoff unless he's able to pump out a lot of Void Rays very, very quickly. And again, we've talked about his lack of gas. So... That's eh, not that like. <laughs> Crazy having a little bit of a hard time with the uh, the high ground mechanics here. He is going to lose two tanks just to geography alone. Third tank looks like it's going to make it out of there. Oh man, this is amusing. This is this is awesome. And we've got the tanks swinging up here on the, um, the middle of the high ground, just out of, oh, now just in range of those cannons, going to lose a tank here. Really good decision making here by Raisinhoff, choosing to uh, pull the uh, tanks, marines, anything he can into range of the um, the turrets, however. <laughs> Kray's going a little old school here and using his orbital commands to, uh, to scan up and get vision. Remember, tanks can uh, shoot further than they can see, and that's, you know, definitely magnified by the fact that there's high ground here, so scans can uh, definitely help with the whole leap frogging situation. Now, uh, Kreis has lost a huge amount of uh, his army. He's lost 44 uh, marines, he's lost 8 tanks, 2 reapers, and you can see the brass. It's not been, like, numerically that good of a, a game for him. Um, you know, he's lost 5,000 resources here, but he can trade so effectively. And bear in mind, his opponents lost even more. Most of those were minerals, but it's still a beautiful thing. Now, here's the interesting part. I don't think we've seen stem pack used once. I don't even know if it's been researched yet. It looks like it may have been. Alright. Immortals trying to pull these Martins and uh, Reapers on back. And uh, that appears to be working pretty well for them. Um, he's going to be going for Protoss Air Armor level 1, but he's not going for Protoss Air, unfortunately. He has forgotten to produce out of this uh, this building, and it's been done for quite some time, guys. Remember, that was his really one of his major saving possibilities initially. Now, <laughs> Craze is going for something a little bit crazy here. He has seen how many turrets are everywhere, but and he doesn't know if there's any turrets over here. There's not. He's totally going to be able to do something here if he tries to. But he's going to do it for this Phoenix Pops. Because this Phoenix could rally right. Oh, he is going to do it. He is going to do it, guys. He is going to do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Drop, 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 drop. We have a drop. We have a drop, guys. Yes. All right. And this actually may be the end of uh, end of Raisin Hawk in this game. His tech is very easily sniped right here. Interesting, Craze is going for that Nexus, and that is all of the uh, mining capacity of Raisin Hawk. Raisin Hawk going to be not GGing out of that game, going straight into the uh, the victory screen there, guys. Well, I will be getting the uh, next game set up for these players. Going to find out what map uh, Raisin Hawk wants. See if that. Uh, works better with his style. See what kinds of things Ben can um, 
uh, managed to, uh, I, I highly expect Craze will be the aggressor. I know this guy. Um, so see what kind of uh, things he can do to pry those bases wide on it. Guys, I'll uh, be right back. So thank you so much. We are going to the pause screen. Welcome back, Polygoners. We are going to be going into game number two between a turtle and a rabbit. It's kind of a fair comparison, actually. We'll see if the uh, player styles change any of this game, see what uh, different choices are going to be made. And um, hopefully we fix the issue with sound. Uh, Raising off, let me know if um, my voice is uh, still too loud. But apparently one of the players can hear me. Um, we'll, we'll see what we can do there. In the meantime, the map that has been chosen by our red Protoss player is Ascension to Ire. Next to Catalyst, it's one of the fairer, more balanced maps in the pool. And that may lend itself towards Craze's playstyle, because the more standard a map is, the more he's going to be able to adapt to it from Brood War. Now, Raisin Hawk, we saw him go very turtly, but without a ramp last game. I'm curious to see if he chooses to do that this game. Did he learn the lesson? How much of that high ground advantage do you realize was really helping him? Um, there's, there's a lot to that. So we'll, we'll see where this game goes. And remember, guys, I, we are offering a free hour of coaching to the best placing uh, player from every league. So, in addition to the plaque, the trophy, all the, uh, the the physical awards, these guys will also be getting some free coaching from me, myself, and I, courtesy of uh, Polygon Gaming. So, if you're interested in um, some of uh, like you know educational StarCraft II content, please visit us on YouTube, YouTube.com. Um, just search for Polygon SC2, the same as the Twitch, and yeah, yeah, you'll find us. Alright, so I don't see any reason to delay this game anymore. You're on the top left-hand side of Ascension to Ire. He's a red Brotoss player. Raisin Hawk. And in the bottom right-hand side of that very same map, hailing from Brood War, he's been Raise craft. All right, he went for a reactor, cancels it, and goes for a tech lab. Looks like we will be seeing more of the uh, the tank style play that uh, we saw before. Out of him, gotta love that. Marine has already gone forward. He sees that uh, this is a fairly fast expansion build. Low ground uh, buildings. We'll see if he wants to try to take advantage of that forge just now. About a third of the way through for for uh, Raising Hawk. There is an SUV being pulled by Cray, so this looks like it could be some kind of a uh, very very fast bunker rush. That would be awesome, actually. Does he does he do it on the third? Does he go up here? Because there's plenty of room up here, dude. Um, yeah, no, no, he's 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 gonna do it on the low ground. That's 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 an odd decision. But he does know how to leapfrog, so we'll see how that goes. Stargate on the way right now for Raisin Hog, so there is a uh, time limit on on Craze here for um, how long th th until this attack actually expires. Uh, Void Rays not gonna be able to deal with uh, Marines. Phoenix is not gonna be able to deal with Marines. Oracles once you get two or three of them, though, they can do quite a good job. Tanks are on the field. Uh, here very, very shortly, Starport going to be wrapping up as well, and we've got another bunker coming uh, forward here for, for Craze. Raising Hawk in a little bit of a rough position. The um, Chrono Boost are going to allow Zealot to pop out, but one Zealot not going to be able to do that very much against the Marines. And it looks like this base is forfeit yet again. This game is much, much shorter than our last one. But the Oracle is going to be popping out here very shortly. Both players are very low on the uh, economy. Um, about twice the uh, the mineral income, though, for Craze as compared to uh, Raisin Hawk. You kind of expect that with a second base as well as mules. 
Raising Rock again with a low gas count. That's just not very Protoss esque, in my opinion. And that Zealot trying to shut down the bunker, but the bunker's not even really that necessary for uh, for Crazy. Boom, takes out that Oracle. <laughs> uh, low ground, man. Gotta be careful. If your defense isn't solid, doing greedy plays like this can get you completely wiped out in this game. And there we go. Another tap out there by Raisin Hawk. Grace taking an early 2-0 lead. So how about that? I just realized Ascension to Ire wasn't actually in the map pool. But we'll go with it. We'll go with it. It was in the last pool. I always get pools confused when we're right here on the, the bridge between them. No biggie. No biggie. Alright. Okay, so players ready. Alright, we are going to be getting started now. All right, so guys, if you um, are just tuning in with us, welcome. This is the Carolina Gaming Summit in Goldsboro, North Carolina. If you happen to be near there, there's still plenty of time left. You should definitely drop on by. We've got a whole bunch going on. There's like 28 tournaments going on here today. Um, not just StarCraft. We've got League of Legends, Overwatch. Um, I assume there's Dota. I know there's Smash Brothers. There's pretty much anything you want to do, you can do it here. Um, if you're a little further away than North Carolina, might take you too long to get here. Just, you know, show us here on the stream. Enjoy it. Um, definitely having some fun. We've got some low-level games here for you today. This is uh, already the finals. It's the first round, but it's the finals. Only two players showed up to our tournament. Hopefully, we'll have some stragglers coming in a little bit later. Who knows? Um, filler. <laughs> um, here, why don't we um, pull up Twitch chat and see, um, see what you guys have to say. Normally I have a second monitor for this sort of thing, because I really do like, uh, like seeing what you guys have to, have to say. Alright, now we should have some, uh, have some chat. All right, so guys, let us know uh, what you think right now. Um, I know these games, again, not the highest caliber, but what do you think so far? I mean, pretty cool event, something you might be interested in coming to next time if it's nearby. I don't know, give us some thoughts here. Anyways, we will be going into our uh, very next game here. So, shit. Okay, cool. All right. Here on the top left-hand side, Acid Plan Ladder Edition. He's our blue Terran buddy, Big Chris Crap. Currently up 2-0. His opponent, sort of in the bottom right, sort of. In the red, Brotoss Trunks. He's Raisin Hop. He's also in the top right. There's that. So this is what you call a proxy gateway style attack. The interesting thing is that when you compare the path from here, all the way over here, all the way over here, it's not that much shorter than this path here. I mean, it is kind of shorter, but not that much shorter. And that's a problem. Because the point of a proxy is to put it like right here, or maybe even over here closer, and get your units there that much quicker to exploit your opponent's timing. It just really changes the production schedule, especially when it comes to defense. But no. Instead, he's put some very, very important buildings on the wrong side of the map. Now, why would you hide these gateways? Because you're gateway rushing. Why would you go for a forge in addition to that? I have no idea. But it's a very ambitious attack. I'll give him props for that. 
You know, in lower level games, you find yourself criticizing a lot of decision making. And Raisin Hawk's decision making has been a little bit weaker in this in um, in the series so far. Whereas Craze's decision making, not based in today's meta, but just based on star sense, really. Not to mention his APM has been significantly better for almost the entire series. That that plays a role. Now, as you can see, Craze is slowly inching his way towards towards Raisin Hawk. A little bit of vision there, but not too much. You know, he's got this SCV in there. He's seen that there's no Nexus. He's seen there's no higher level tech. He's seen only one gameplay. He knows this guy likes forges. He doesn't even see a forge. There's got to be something going off in his head. His tank? <laughs> now getting intercepted by Zealots. Luckily, they don't have Zealot legs. But now the uh, the offense is on is on him. Craze has been the offensive player in every other game so far. This tank is going to be used for defense, but going ahead and taking a lot of shots straight to the face from the Zealot. Or the Zealot's getting pulled off to go chase that tank. One going to be sticking around to... Uh, to Finish this barracks, and there's only one barracks on the field, two factories, though. Factories are working on add-ons, so this actually could be really rough right here for Craze. Craze a little bit weaker on the defense, but while this is happening, oh, he, killed, he killed off that tank, too. Oh, my God. The Marines are going to be swinging right back off. These Zealots are totally worth their waiting. Oh, my God. Raisin Hog is decimated. Oh, me, oh, my. Uh, SCVs. Getting pulled off to uh, repair the tanks, but then he forgets to continue to repair the tanks. A few of those SCVs really should have stuck around. You are actually oversaturated, but Craze doing a good job with the micro APM. Definitely starting to flare up. He's at 250. His opponent's at 70. Um, there's a huge difference here of the tanks. Cleaning up the bulk of the Zealots. Zealots not even choosing to target the tanks. Instead, going for uh, the barracks. Now, this one Zealot over here, Hero Zealot, seven kills on this Zealot. Uh, no kills on this Zealot, but this Zealot... Definitely fresh to the battle, so he's going to be coming in with sharp blades. These zealots are going to be swinging in here as well, and they have already done some battle here. Uh, the SCVs <laughs> getting killed off. There's still 13 more SCVs than there are probes, so we'll see how that chooses to go. Raisin Hawk actually um, now choosing a different position here. I thought this might have been like a higher level tag hit from two different angles. No one said he is actually just rallying gateways from the two different angles. Widow Mines still being produced here by Craze, but he has not actually figured out how to use them apparently because he is still yet to be burrowing at them. They could make the difference in a uh, hold here and uh, just dying outright. These SCVs getting pulled off the line again. He wants to uh, go ahead and end this attack. And this attack has been shut down, but at a huge and devastating cost. Yet, all of that said, because here's the cost, 11 zealots, not a big deal, 23 SCVs, 3 tanks, 6 marines, that's a big deal, but there's a second base, and you could kind of compare this to chess, and chess, if you just like rush to get like your backline units, like your queen, your bishop, your knight, or whatever, forward, and neglect your pawn structure, ultimately your later game is going to be weak. That's kind of what Raisin Hawk has done in this game. Where Craze has made economic decisions and technological decisions, if he ever manages to stabilize and take this into a normal game, he will be worlds ahead. You can see he's loading the 700 minerals because he's got the more SCVs, he's got more workers, he's got a second production uh, for workers. All of this will play its role. However, just not knowing how to use Widow Mines is really, really hurting him. The, the Widow Mines do have to be burrowed. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe he just hasn't had a chance to, to read that yet. I'm not sure. Um, Alright, so <laughs> very interesting little uh, Widow Mines around here on the Zealots. Oh my god. <laughs> the Widow Mine. Hello. It's just like a hug of Widow Mines, man. Alright, so we'll see where this game goes from here. We've got a huge amount of zealots just continually being produced. Craze, uh. Craze actually not making any Marines out of these barracks. This is, this is a little rough. He's got the supply to do it, he's got the minerals to do it. He's forgot about mining gas, though. 
Huh. Oh, he finally figured out how to burrow the mines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mines are so useless. They die so quickly. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so Raisin Hawk definitely uh, pulling out that one surprise game that I was expecting. Now, from here, this could be anybody's series, but I'm thinking that Raisin Hawk might be able to finish this at this point because um, that just the lack of marine production for quite some time really really hurt craze but he's getting back on there really nice micro here he's doing a really good job with the uh, marines once he figures out the reapers these are definitely his type of game he's like the super in your face harassment oriented player so yeah reapers definitely in style back it up no no not gonna happen all right cool so we've got three bases right now raising oh wait wait he is actually taking a base there. I said three bases kind of joking, like, oh, this babe, oh, this babe, oh, this, oh my god, he's actually got a nexus there. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so um, the tank's finally in production. Tank's going to be a huge benefit here against these zealots. Now, we noticed a trend in Raisin Hawk's play earlier. He plays with a very low gas count, and this game's no exception. He is literally not mined any gas whatsoever so nothing but zealots not even tur or uh, cannon and as this inches longer and longer craze is a uh, well okay so let's let's talk about something minerals allow you to make more stuff gas allows you to make different and or better stuff so you can get upgrades which makes the units you already have like marines or whatever better or you can get different stuff, like widow mines or tanks or something like that. In Raisin Hawk's case, he's going to be limited to zealots. He can't even make those things better. He's just going to be able to get a lot of zealots. Now, still no gases being taken, even at the expansion by Raisin Hawk. So, what Crazy's going to be able to do is get better stuff. And once he's got enough better stuff, the investment cost to kill off the zealots for Raisin Hawk will start to decline. It's not going to cost craze as much. And as this stuff gets better and different, it's going to snowball. <clears throat> Both players do have two bases, though. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Huge! Alright, just keeping an eye on the time because we do have another event called the Sunday Skirmish that will be uh will be starting in about 50 minutes on the same channel, and then we'll come back for more Carolina Gaming Summit. All right, the Marines are going to be running up this ramp with a mine uh, back there for support. So what he'll be able to do is run these Marines into the widow mine for some very awesome defense at that point. Now, while these Marines are wrecking Raven, uh, la, 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 Raisin Hawk's base, I'm going to call him Raven Hawk for some reason. Um, as he is uh, wrecking Raisin Hawk's base, the Zealots are doing the exact same thing to Craze's base. However, the SCVs are doing a great job with the repairs. He's got enough of them pulled that they can repair, 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 repair. However, he's repairing faster than he's making the money. So sometimes these SCVs not necessarily doing everything they could. Maybe if you had half these SCVs and the other half mining, this would be an even better situation. Oh, he forgets the repair. But it's cool. And there we go. Looks like this main mining base for Raisin Hawk has been eliminated. The proxies are still coming, though. Alright, so ranged units, pretty darn good, especially against melee uh, units. The tanks are doing the best job that they can. And we will see what the uh, the next choice is here for Raisin Hawk. Uh, we do get a scan here by Ben. He sees this base. He knows it's there. And uh, he's got basically 
eight times the army supply, so this this should be a pretty uh, pretty simple kill there. Hold on, let's make it epic. Let's make it epic. Dun 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 dun. Woo! Yeah, not my best camera. Work. Hello, cannon. So he's going to kill him with half his army. The other half all the way. Oh, no, he's bringing it down. There we go. There we go. And pulling this half away. <laughs> what a troll. <laughs> what an absolute troll. Actually, no, I forgot. There's there's a base over here. So it's not, it's not trolling. He just wants to kill him quicker. And there we go. Raising Hawk has left the game. Craze taking another victory. 3-0 lead at this point. We are going to be moving into game number four momentarily. Let me get the uh, maps from the players, guys. We will be right back. All right. Welcome back, Polygoners. So I just noticed something. The title is actually incorrect for the... Uh, for the stream, sorry about that. I'm like I said, I'm at a brand new location, never been here before, casting from that. So, anyways, we're going to be getting right into this game because we do have a little bit of a rush situation. We had a couple of forward pylons, and um, it looked like uh, he was going to try and build the gateways forward in that position. See uh, that? We missed that while I was messing with the title. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Forgive me. Anyway, Craze has responded to this threat um, very, very well. We, we were expecting um, uh, more an orthodox play out of Raising Hog at this point. He has realized, like, Macro game, maybe he won't be able to take it against Craze. So, with more unorthodox styles here, they are definitely giving him a chance in this series. Some really nice micro here by Craze is micro again scaling as he gets more and more comfortable with the way StarCraft 2 plays. We've seen him go basically from 100 APM to all the way up to about 300 at a uh, certain times in this game. An expansion also going down here for Craze. And. I, I, I actually I, I'm talk, acting as if uh, we've already introduced to these players. So here we go on the bottom left hand side of Black Pink Lighter Edition. He is our blue Terran buddy, Ben Craze Craft. And on the top of the right hand side of Black Pink, with a lone zealot chasing his Marines to his death, it's Raisin Hall. All right, so here we go. We've got Marines uh, going to be taking the low ground. Zealot's getting pulled into that low ground. Really nice micro. He's basically pulling just a couple of these Marines away while the rest of the Marines continue firing as that Zealot continues to chase. It is the range of a verse melee dynamic, and it messes up a lot of players um, at the lower stages of this game. Now, <laughs> Looks like uh, that's gonna that's gonna be it. This was a very very rushy rushy style game here by Raisinhoff. Both players floating quite a bit. We've got more gas here from Raisinhoff, but just not uh, able to deliver that death blow. And Cray is going to be chasing him all the way back home and getting getting um a pretty solid cleanup. Pylons have been picked off. There is nothing powering these gateways. There's no real ability to get more power to them. The probe's not going to be able to hold these marines. The pylon uh, just now completing. So guys, this is going to uh, be game number four. And this is a best of nine series. We're already in the finals, if you weren't already aware. So a um, little bit one-sided, but definitely make sure you guys stay tuned because after this particular match, we will be um, doing a little bit of coaching here on this end on the stream um, later on. But at 2 p.m., we will be uh, doing the Sunday skirmish. It's going to be uh, Penguin versus Future Starcraft. That is going to be a Zerg versus Terran. And, of course, our staff, um, Andy Man Boobs, as well as uh, Kidnado1, 
we'll be uh, we'll be coming in to cast that, give me a little bit of break and a little bit of time to enjoy the Carolina Gaming Summit. Now, Crazy is going to be killing off his opponent here in just a few moments. We're just waiting for the uh, the tap out. There we go. Crazy going to uh, be taking that 4-0, and uh, we'll be moving into game uh, number five. We'll find out what Matt Raisenhoff would like. All right, Polygoners, welcome back. We are going to be entering our very next game very, very shortly. The map is going to be Neon a Violet Square Inn. Just to remind you guys, this is an odd map, yes, but it is game point. This map has some features on it that are going to be very new. This is something, like, Raisinhawk might be a genius for coming up with this, because there's so many elements of this particular map that... Someone who's not familiar with StarCraft, who hasn't played this map, is going to have to come up an uphill battle. So if Risen Ops want to take a victory, this is going to be the way to uh, way to go. However, there's another catch here. There's another catch. Here on the bottom right hand side, Neon Violet Square Ladder Edition and the blue Terran Strongs. He is currently up 4-0 in this best of nine. He is sitting on game point. It is Ben Craze Craft. And here on the top of the left hand side in the red Zerg trunks. That's right, I said it. He is a Zerg. He is race switched. He is no longer Protoss. He is Zerg. We'll see if he can do any better in this matchup. So this is now ZBT. He's Raisin Hawk. Again with the weird build. So when he was Protoss, he didn't like to take a lot of gas. Now that he's Zerg, he loves taking gas. Because look, this is super early to be taking gas, and he's got two of them, but he's only mining from two on one and one on the other. And that extractor, ah, my mind is melting. This could be a drone. This could be a drone. This could be a drone. What's wrong with this world? All right, so we got a Bane Nest coming along the way. I'm going to have to teach a Sky 12 full build. I'm going to have to teach a Sky 12 full build. It is that official. And we do see an expansion coming out now for Raisinhawk. A little bit lacking on the overload spread. We can just get, get this guy to go easy. Spend an hour with him. No problem. Alright, so crazy. Definitely sees both that his opponent's Zerg if he wasn't already aware of it, and that it's a fairly rushy type build, and that his opponent is expanding. So I think with this information, Chris will be able to make an intelligent decision. Actually, believe it or not, guys, uh, Chris is one of the players who got me into StarCraft a long, long time ago. We've been friends. 15, 16 years, and um, it was through a third party, a mutual friend of ours named Trey. That, um, he, Trey's actually the one who got me into StarCraft, but then got Trey into it, so it's kind of like an A equals B, B equals C type thing, so A equals C. Yeah, yeah, Ben's responsible for that. So guys, we have all come a long, long way in that, uh, that amount of time. Roach is going to be on the way for... Raisin Hawk. Raisin Hawk. I want to call him Raven Hawk. Two different birds, man. Raisin Hawk. It's like, I guess that's what would happen if you lose a hawk out in the sun too long. Ew. In case you were wondering, though, guys, um, beef jerky is like a meat raisin. All right, so Marines, you having really no problem with the the lings. Lings don't have ling speed. Without ling speed, you're not going to be able to do a lot. And, Again, he's got three times his opponent's army supply. So he has been going for a very technological build. As you can see, he's got so much gas, he doesn't even have the ability to spend it all. Roaches definitely cost more minerals than they do gas. So just an intriguing decision. I can see uh, Ben was having a little bit of a hard time with these little pink squares, but it looked like the pathing fixed it for him. That was not uh, that was not him. That was that was just luck. <laughs> But it's okay. He'll, he'll get the hang of those. Those are those are super annoying. All right. So Ling's going to be coming onto the field. No Ling speed though. So kiting should definitely be a priority once Stempack gets on the field. Tank uh, tanks running away from the uh, the Ling's here. Tank being very smart to just go around. I think their collision size is actually too big to go through. It's something you can uh, exploit in your own game. See uh, just see how narrow those are. Yeah. 
All right, so the army spot now swinging into the favor of Raisin Hawk. Still going for a Roachling attack. Gonna definitely be a bit of an issue. Uh, I think tanks, um, especially sieged tanks, do really, really well against a Roachling timing. However, uh, sorry, I'm stretching a little bit here, guys. Uh, however, these tanks are not sieged yet, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see where that goes. By the way, I see twelve of the audience, or twelve members in the audience, rather. I just realized you guys can probably hear yourself in an echo type thing. Hopefully that just fixed that. My fault. Was trying to get the uh, the stream up so I could edit the title and whatnot. Not being able to hear things. It sucks. All right, so um, tanks are totally obliterating this Roachling attack actually, and he's sitting on uh, twice the the economy or twice the SCVs of his opponent. So that's definitely a thing right now. Guys, this is this is uh, looking looking pretty brutal. This might be a very, very fast series. A five zero, in fact, is a possibility here. The slow lurching tanks moving across the map. Reaper's a little bit faster. All right, so here we go. We are moving into the pink. We are moving into the pink, but remember, the tanks have to go around, and that is a huge issue for the tanks. All right, Banelings are on the field. This is a new unit. I don't think uh, Craze is actually familiar with what they do, but he knows to run away from them. That's a good thing. <laughs> the tank's not even bothering sieging and some of this stuff. Ravager's on the field now. Still just way too much gas for Raisin Hawk. All right, stem back about halfway done, but that's not going to stop this attack. He is just going to roll right on through here. This natural going to be completely obliterated. Now, there may be an opportunity for... Never mind, never mind. I was about to say there might be an opportunity for those roaches to just stay back and wait for reinforcements, and he might be able to knock this attack back. But at this point, uh, that army just got decimated. The tanks made the difference here. Raisin Hawk going to be eliminated from this 5-0. It's just a matter of moments. And that second base thing goes down. Overlord's going to be sacrificed to the Overlord Gods. And again, we've got like this high ground situation on one base. We'll see if Kraze can uh, jump up like a Reaper. Gotta love all these uh, units just going out onto the map for Kraze. Like, there's stuff everywhere. He's like, is he hiding a base? This is that star sense we were talking about. Like Starcraft and Starcraft 2 are vastly different games, but there are some things that are just that common. <laughs> oh man. Neon Violet Square. I I I have mixed feelings about this map. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love the art style first of all, and I think that uh, these pink things really make you think about your units a little bit more. And like how to position them. So I, I like this map. And we are up to 16 viewers, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Chef with Polygon Gaming. You are watching the finals of the Carolina Gaming Summit. We have two lower level players bringing you some awesome local amateur StarCraft talent. And these Reapers taking it straight to the face. The Marines are going to be coming in from behind. The Reapers, not the uh, the unit you want tanking for you, but at this stage in the game, I'm not sure it even matters. Mm. 
We've got two command centers in production at this point. I don't know if Craze is just toying with him or not. I'm really not sure. And a third expansion. Fourth expansion. There's five bases total for Curry's right now, guys. Win ahead, get more ahead. That is the StarCraft motto. What's, what's Burrow here? Does he just think he's gonna like pull these up and just like pop out when, behind them? Or this army does not kill this army. Ah, uh, okay. All right, cool. We'll see how this goes. Like, I totally want to jump in and play these guys and, like, help and coach and do so much. But, no, I have to stay in this room all by myself and cast. It's fantastic, actually. <laughs> Armory, rapid fire launchers, everything you could ever want as a Terran shall be yours with a low price of $9.99. Plus shipping and handling. Shipping and handling is extra. Shipping and handling is $79.99 plus your firstborn kit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely toying with his opponent at this stage. <laughs> He's sending two Marines just because he can. All right, it looks like this could be the big attack. Craze playing a little bit cautiously, not bringing the tanks into the field, not bothering the siege of the tanks either. Roach is a little bit scary, I think, the first time you see them. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that's okay. He should be able to, yep, siege those tanks. And the roaches will, will melt pretty much instantly. Oh, he's unseizing the tanks. So many Marines. All right, Roach is going to be swinging down, trying to take out the tanks. Those are really the first targets you've got to go for there. Another base over here finally gets up. Is not going to get mine from up. And at this stage in the game, Kray's just going to be swinging right into the main. That's a good choice. Take out the lair, take out the queens, take out all the technological structures. And that is all she wrote, guys. There is no surviving this attack. Woo! Remember, after this attack, or, or after this attack, actually after this particular match, we will have about a 15, 20 minute break uh, while we set up for the Sunday skirmish. But bear that in mind, guys, we will be right back. Sunday skirmish should begin around 2 p.m. Eastern. They're going to give me a little bit of a break from casting, but it looks like since this series is over, we will probably just go ahead and uh, call it after the Sunday skirmish. So, just want to say my goodbyes now. I'll be at the Sunday Skirmish, but I will not be casting. So this will be the last time you hear from me. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. You are currently watching the Carolina Gaming Summit. This is every year, almost always on February 4th. You might be watching the uh, Super Bowl right now. If you are, what the hell is wrong with you? There are esports to watch, guys. Craze taking it. 5-0 in a very convincing victory. Guys, this was the Carolina Gaming Summit. We are going to have our award ceremony at 6 p.m. Eastern. I believe it's going to be streamed on twitch.tv slash Carolina Games Summit. If not, you can see the award ceremony um, videos. I'll put them up on the YouTube channel uh, when I can. But that's pretty much all there is to say here about this, guys. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming.
I bet you I do. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hook for you.